Geometry, Unit 3, Section 3, Reflections. So there's two types of constructions that we want to do with reflections, and then a couple things we want to talk about them. First is if I'm given a reflected image here. So I have this image, and then it's prime image. Uh, this is the pre-image, and the prime we call the reflected image. I want to find the line of reflection. You could probably estimate about where that is, but I want to use construction tools to precisely know exactly where that is. And then there's also the construction of actually reflecting something across the line. So first, how do I find the line of reflect reflection? Construct the segment that represents the line of reflection for this quadrilateral. And then what is true about some things? For the finding the point of rotation in the previous video, we did two perpendicular bisectors to see where they cross. Well, finding the line of reflection is even easier. It's not two perpendicular bisectors, it's one perpendicular bisector. And the perpendicular bisector itself is actually the line of reflection. So one perpendicular bisector. So I just got to connect two corresponding points such as C and C prime, but I can use any two points I'd like. I could do D and D prime or A and A prime or whatever. Um, and you can do this with multiple points and see if it falls on top of itself. It should. So here's C and C prime, and let me get my compass out. I need to switch to uh, a pointer. Go over there, as close as I can. Let's turn this, extend it more than halfway, maybe a little more to be safe. All right, flip it around. Same deal there, where they cross. Let's see if I could draw a good line here, very good. That's my line of reflection right there. And I can extend it if I like. Um, and now if I were to do the perpendicular bisector for an A and A prime, it should be the same line. D and D prime, same line. B and B prime, same line. So it's really a pretty quick construction there, just the perpendicular bisector of corresponding points. Now reflecting across the line. So I want to reflect AB across line L. Here's AB and here's line L. And notice that we have a lowercase r here. The capital R was used for rotations. Sorry, let me. Uh, capital R is our notation for rotations. Rotation. A uh, lowercase r is the notation we use for reflection. So you're going to see both of those symbols. When you see capital R means rotate, lowercase r means reflect. So how do we do the construction for a reflection? It's similar to the construction for a perpendicular through a point, if you remember that one. What that means is go to the point you want to do and extend your compass more than halfway. Uh, I mean, more than the distance from the point to the line. And what this allows us to do when I draw the arc is it crosses in two locations. Keep your radius distance of your compass, what it is, in those spots draw some arcs and the same thing over here and now if I were to connect this that would be perpendicular through a point but what actually works out is this point is my reflection of a right there so that's a prime that's really all it is and I'll do one for B And so that is going to cross twice, once, twice at that spot. And I'll change it over here. There we go. That is B prime. And so then I just have to use my straight edge to connect them together to create a reflected image. That's it. So reflection constructions are pretty short and pretty easy. Um, finding the line of reflection is just a perpendicular bisector, and reflecting a point is just really three arcs. Uh, you have to do it for each point. So if I have a triangle for all three of those, I'll have to draw three arcs. But set a distance, keep the distance, set a distance, keep the distance, connect it, and it should look like a reflection if you did it properly. Um, skip something over here. It says, what is true about each point 
on A, B, C, D that corresponds to A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime? Well, because these are perpendicular bisectors, how we do this, that means that C and C prime are the same distance away from the line of reflection. And that's how symmetry works, that whatever this distance is, this is going to be the same. And that makes sense because this was a perpendicular bisector. And so I cut this line in half so the halves are equal. So A and this line of reflection and A prime and the line of reflection are the same distance. And the same holds true for what we did over here, that the distance now between A and L should be the distance of A prime and L if you do your constructions properly. So we get a consistent distance away from the line of reflection happening there. So that's it. This is a short one. Uh, two basic constructions on how to do reflections. See ya.